and welcome back. People have been asking me to talk about 5G. I should say a little disclaimer, I don't even have a mobile phone. But 5G actually is really interesting and it isn't just about mobile phones. It's much more than that. And it's being built right now, like it or not. So we're always being marketed new phones and stuff. 5G, just something around the corner. What exactly is the G of 5G? Every time we make one of these transitions, you know, whether it's from analog to digital, digital voice to data and so forth, we call that a generation change. We've been working on mobile for 30 years. It really culminated in the smartphone. So now we have a chance to hit the reset button, make a bunch of changes, and then that allows us to add all these things that we wanted to add into 4G that we couldn't. So 5G will make your phone lightning fast, but to do it, they had to change to a completely new wave band or frequency the millimeter band. So how could 5G do higher data rates to move more data faster and more reliably, but do it in a way that you have great coverage across a cellular network? And so a big part was making sure it could work in millimeter wave spectrum. If you can solve those challenges, the capacity is huge, tenfold, 20-fold higher compared to what you can get with 4G. It was interesting because, you know, there were a lot of things that were being said about, nah, millimeter wave really doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work in non line of sight environment. And by the way, there is no way it's going to work once you put your hands around it. Over the years, we systematically solved one problem after the other. And I remember a moment a few years back when, you know, we said, you know what, we're actually going to put this literally in the passenger seat of a minivan in New Jersey and we drove around. This is as non line of sight as it can get. The base station is located over some roof somewhere and we were just driving around and it still worked. The advantages of the millimeter wave band are incredibly high speed, but also something called low latency. Latency is how fast when you press a button, something happens. And that's very important. 5G was the first time we said, you know, there are tons of other applications which have nothing to do with what we think of as smartphones. We are talking of industrial robots. This is high precision manufacturing. They need to be controlled with very low latency. And by the way, there are no wires associated with it. So you actually need ultra reliability. And it's not so much about gigabit data rates. It's about making sure that you're within hundreds of microseconds of latency, just in terms of the ability to control the equipment. This low latency means you can start having smart devices. You've probably heard the phrase, the internet of things. 5G will be how it's all controlled. Obviously, 5G will be a targeted advertiser's dream because it can pinpoint you much more accurately. When we think about AI, we think that the real value is gonna be unlocked when it's closer to people. Think of sensors as digitizing our world and there's an incredible amount of data there. The way people experience AI today is mostly in the cloud. It's clicking on websites. And then what's happening is they're learning about you so that they can give you advertisement. Much of that data should be and will be consumed at the edge. Edge meaning close to people. What 5G does is it offers an opportunity to have very low latency connection to what we would call an edge cloud. And that edge cloud can aid in computation, but it also can provide privacy, security. And in combination, um, we call that the wireless edge. Let's look a bit more at this millimeter wave band that we're being promised with 5G. What exactly does it mean? The millimeter wave band is also used by the military. So does that mean that 5G is dangerous? Some people think so. It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World War II. They also claim it's actually a military weapon. 
5G is a weapon. It's used by the military. They drive up in these technology when they want to scatter a cloud and they put out these frequencies in a much higher power than, than 5G will be initially with us, but the same frequency. And people scatter because they get the feeling their skin is on fire. Because the human body, including the skin, is an antenna. It interacts with frequencies and it receives and transmits information. At the cutting edge of understanding of DNA, scientists know that DNA is a receiver transmitter of information. And we are electromagnetic, electrical organisms, transmitters and receivers of information. When our electromagnetic fields are in balance and harmony, we have health. We have psychological health and we have physical health. The reason that this technological society is causing so much psychological and, and um, quote, physical disease is because these frequencies, technologically driven, and we live in this Wi-Fi world now and all the phone masks and all the rest of it, these technologically generated frequencies are scrambling the balance of the human electrical, electromagnetic electrical communication systems. And if you scramble them, you, 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 you create a state of disharmony, dis-ease, which plays through to physical and mental, emotional, psychological dis-ease. Because 5G is so focused and easily blocked, one of the possible consequences of installing the 5G network will be cutting down urban trees. So I guess 5G is coming, like it or not. You can let me and everybody else know if you do like it by leaving a comment, because the truth is out there.